What's going on, Golf Addicts? Welcome to the Arnold Palmer Invitational 2023 Betting Picks Outrights. We got top 20 locks and bombs coming at the end. It's going to be a great show tonight. We're giving away a lot of stuff tonight, so don't skip over anything. But first, last week was an amazing week for all of us. Yes, it was. Pat was literally, you know, drawing drawing pictures on himself like a like a four year old. And you know what? I'll hold my comments till after. But it was good to see Chris Kirk get the victory. Even better to see my boy Pat get the victory. Pat, the floor is yours. Well, DB, I just want you to know that, um, and and I appreciate you giving me the floor because, um, well, it's deserved. It's deserved. Yeah. Um, now I'll say this, DB, the Honda classic has been a place where you and I have shined. Mm -hmm. Okay. People come over from the, you know, from the West coast where they've been for the better part of a, a month and a half for the beginning of the PGA tour season. And they're, they're enjoying the West coast. And then they get over to the East coast and they get to the Honda classic and they're a little bit, um, discouraged kind of like I was, I was yeah. discouraged. I hadn't won anything DB. And so what did I do? I came on the show last week. It was a dark place for me. I had a black hoodie on. I was ready to join the convent and become a nun. I don't know if they, I don't know what a male nun is called. I can't forget. I, what's, a a, what's, what's a male nun? A priest? Is I, I don't know. Whatever it is, I wanted to join it. <laughs> but then DB. A friar? You ready to be a friar? But then DB, I realized, yes, I realized that I needed to be reborn. Okay. Yeah. And so you know what, DB? It's called a butterfly life. A butterfly life. And I've got a little something for you about a butterfly life, okay? Because you know what, DB? I was scared. I was scared. I was scared that I would never have a victory again. Yeah. Never in my life would I see a victory. The victories would be long lost. Long yeah. lost. I, I was scared. But you know what, DB? I knew I, knew I needed to be brave. Yeah. Okay, I needed to have bravery. And so what did I do? I was brave, and I went into a dark cocoon. Went into a dark cocoon where I didn't know what was going to happen. Okay, there was uncertainty, DB. There was uncertainty. What am I going to— Is this part of the thing that you read? Is this a poem, or what is this? This is—just let me do my thing. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't know what was going to happen, DB. You keep saying DB a lot. You said DB a, a lot. Okay, sorry. I feel like I'm in trouble when you say that. What was I going to become in this cocoon? cocoon this cocoon. <laughs> Cacoon. What was I gonna become? Was, was I gonna was I gonna come out like a moth? Was I gonna look like a closet moth, maybe? Flip, and, flip? and and a, and a cloth is really just a um that's really just a really a, a butterfly from a trailer park is really what that is. Yeah, because they those go into cocoon. Trailer park too. butterfly. So I didn't know when I went into the cocoon DB. Will you just be quiet and let me do this? Okay, sir. When I went into the cocoon, what was going to happen? It was a dark cocoon. Nothing was there. I didn't know. I didn't know. Was I going to be a, a moth, a moth butterfly? Okay. Was I going to be, was I going to be a beautiful butterfly? I didn't know. But I came out from the Honda Classic, a beautiful butterfly, DB, a beautiful butterfly. I flew, I had bright colors around me when I came out of that cocoon. Okay. I had reds, I had blues. I had red and blacks. I had red and blacks for sure, because that's what Bulldogs have, and that's what Chris Kirk has. And Chris Kirk got me a victory at 35 to 1. He was on the card. He ended the whole thing. And you know what? That's what happens when you get reborn, DB, and you have faith in that cocoon process. Mm. And you know what? Mm. Mm. It's a beautiful thing. I'm a beautiful butterfly now. You are, dude. You are. You're, you got you to gotta shine about you. I see a victory over here. I see a victory in that corner. I see a victory in that corner over there. You, sir, right there. You, sir. You look like you had a victory yes, y y just yesterday, you know? And um, dang, it was good to see you, man. Now, you know, and, and, and now your, your betting card is, uh, is up roughly 20 units. My betting yeah. card is up roughly 20 units. We're just, we're just having a day. We're, we're having a year here. You know, we're just we're just hitting winners. This is the beauty. This is the the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs of golf betting. Yeah. It's not for the faint of heart. You know, Pat almost Pat almost lost it. 
You know, he he was very dark. I, I don't know what would have happened if he if Chris Kirk had not won after yeah. after what he did on the 18th hole. That would have been very. This whole night would have looked very different. But totally different. Totally different. This is the thing with golf betting and with betting on outrights is it can just just like in the real golf world for a guy like Chris Kirk. You know, one win, and he's a, he's a multiple PJ Tour winner, but it's been a while, and it just takes one, and all of a sudden you're like, look at all my units. You know, you could be in the in unit jail, just bleeding units, and then yes. just one hits, and you're here, and you're confident, you're ready to roll, you feel like you got new life, you stand a little taller, your balls hang a little bit lower. Whew. I mean, also because it's your birthday, it's your birthday on Wednesday, so they're gonna they're gonna get lower. Um, do they get lower? Do they drop on your birthday like a little bit? I think the older you get, I think I think when you get past forty five, I think they start dropping. I think science says they they drop like a fractional amount every year after forty five. Can you do exercises though to c- prevent that? I don't know. You might have to look that up. Why don't you look that yeah. up? Let's listen to how yeah. that goes. Um, yeah, Chris Kirk gets it done, dude. We had a great. You know, on this show, we I had him as a, my top twenty lock. You had Ben Taylor as your four to one top twenty lock, which we're going to get to those. Or you had you had as a bomb. We're going to get to those at the end of the show. Hit that, nailed that. We had, um, you know, th- there's something that happened. We didn't talk about this on the DFS show. There's something that happened Wednesday night. And it's what we've been talking about with the Nut Hut. All it takes is one week. And it almost really became very profitable information. But it was profitable information that we got Wednesday, that we shared in the Nut Hut exclusively on the Wednesday night chat. We uh, altered some of our top 20 bets. I know I changed my card when I got the information. We added some head-to-head matchups, uh, possibly against a certain player that we heard something about. I ended up winning both of those head-to-head matchups. Pat, I had a great, I had my best head-to-head and top 20 week of the season this past week, up over two units in uh, in in the top 20s and one unit one, up one unit in the head-to-heads, thankfully, because of that late information that broke mm-hmm. on Wednesday night. We had, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's just, you know, I, we talk about it every week, and every week it doesn't mean it's going to be the juiciest bit of intel you get, but sometimes all it takes is one little piece of info on a player that you can find a lot of different betting activities on, and you can let you can you can go hard after him or you can fade him and you can kind of have an edge there and that happened on wednesday night could have been a lot better we were one stroke from it being a heck of a lot better but he made the cut on the number and um and that 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 yeah but we still it was a great great week great week in the nut hut yet again and we've got the we're giving away some cash we're giving away some cold hard cash and you ain't got to do hardly anything to get it our friends at leaderboard are ready to give you some cash. We're going to start a new thing tonight, and it's going to run through the Masters. It's the family sweat bet because we're all family. You know what I mean? We're, we want to sweat something mm-hmm. together. Our friends at Leaderboard, the best golf app that you can download right now, iOS only, in the U.S. only. Android's coming. Pump the brakes. Chill. It's okay. Don't get mad. Don't get pissy because you're green. Text, okay? I don't know why, you, I don't know why, but U.S. only, iOS only right now, okay? But it's a jam-up app, and they want to give – some of the community some cash to play with to you know so uh, every week from now through the masters the nut hut is going to vote on one uh one particular decent long shot bet okay out of a few options and then on monday night i'm going to reveal the results of that vote and that bet is the family sweat bet and if that and, and leaderboard is going to put 50 bucks on that bet and if that bet hits then one lucky person who has downloaded the leaderboard app using the link in the description of this podcast or YouTube video is going to get the cash sent straight to you. Straight cash, homie. What's better than that? You know, it's just cash, cold, hard cash. I mean, nothing. Yeah, nothing. So the family sweat bet for week one voted upon by the Nut Hut members this afternoon is Adam Schink at plus 850 to top 20. So that is the bet to win. You don't have to bet Adam Shink at top 20. You just have to download the leaderboard app and set up your profile. Also, it'd be cool if you followed me and Pat. You don't have to do that, but it'd be cool. And then if it hits, then leaderboard is going to pick a winner who downloaded the app 
and pass the money on to you. If it doesn't hit, then we ride next week, okay? Fresh set of bets possibly coming to the Nut Hut on Monday afternoon. You can bet, and we'll announce them on Monday night. By the way, Monday night for the Players' Championship, me and Pat are together at Pat's house on Pat's couch, just like last year. Things got real weird at that show. And we're going to be rolling out a brand new segment with a very special guest who we've never had before. It's going to be fantastic. We're very excited about it. New segment coming next week for the Players' Championship. So you come and tell your friends to listen, especially tell your friends to watch. I think next next week will be a great YouTube viewing experience. Uh, great relative to our normal YouTube viewing experience. It's yes. not necessarily great, just YouTube in general. But uh, download the Leaderboard app in the description below. Uh, use promo code or referral code TJ if you just search the app in the App Store. Just make sure that it's linked one way or the other so you can be eligible for the contest. And uh, and then use the leaderboard app. Me and Pat used it again last week in our rounds of golf. I had a really solid ball striking week last week, and we're going to be using it this weekend. We're going to be hosting the winner of last year's Listener League from the Nut Hut. We're going to be hosting Bert in Savannah, playing a couple rounds of golf, having a couple a nice meal. Um, and you can track our action there on the leaderboard app as well. Great week, Pat. Great week. I'm yeah, excited. All right, let's take a week. Let's talk about the top of the board. I'm going to have some fun here, Pat. I mean, it's, this is an elevated event, obviously, stacked. You got Rom. So listen, Rom, Rory, Scotty, Morikawa, Willie Z, and Max Homa. Those six players, if you add up the implied odds, are over 50% chance to win. 50% chance that one of those six guys is going to win. That sucks for us, you know, because we, you know, we just don't like the, we don't, we don't like that. Um, Pat, Rom, Rory, and Scheffler implied odds of almost 34%. 34% chance that one of those three guys is going to win. Question Would you rather have one of those three? Would you rather have all three of those guys or the field? Which one would you rather have? In a strong, deep field, you got a 66% chance that the field is going to win but you're putting up your own money here. Which one would you rather have? Those three or the field? Those three. Me too. <laughs> those three. Me too. It's not even close. Yeah, it's not. I think I'd rather have those. We, we talked about Rory extensively in the DFS show, like just his record here, how amazing he's been. The, uh, you know, if the ball striking's still there, he puts really well at Bay Hill. The putter's been cold lately. If he just breaks even, he could possibly... I mean, it's hard to imagine that anybody could lap John Rahm and win, like beat John Rahm by like, or, or Scotty Scheffler by like four shots. But I think Rory could do it if he just puts neutral here at Bay yeah. Hill. Um, but I do have some fun that I'd like to, I'd like to play with it. Cause you know, they got the Puerto Rico open, open going on, Pat. The Puerto Rico open. Uh, they do. And I played that course in, in the summer. Yeah. It's going on. And it's, it, you talk about ugly. That is an ugly field. But I found a way. I'm, I'm interested to see what you think about these. Rom, you can parlay. This is on points bet right now. Now, I think FanDuel lets you do it too, but FanDuel, as of preparing for the show, their top 20 bets were not available yet. But points bet had top 20s available, and they had the outrights available for, uh, for obviously, the API. So I picked John Rom, okay, to win the API. Mm -hmm. And I paired him with Bryce Garnett, to finish top 20 at plus 2,075. So roughly 21 to twenty-one to 1. What do you think about that? Bryce Garnett's last three appearances here at, uh, at Puerto Rico, I believe, two top 10s and a T20. Played well last week, too. I, I don't mind it, but to be honest, I think I'd be rather be pairing uh, somebody from Puerto Rico with Rory because I think Rory is going to be the one that wins this week, not Rom. I mean, I yeah, I, know. I just it's got that putter has got to come a long way. I, I get it, but I just you know, Rom can't win everything. Damn it! Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, he can't <laughs> win everything. Okay, we're gonna be sitting on your couch next week, and we we'll look at you and go. Remember when you said Rom can't win everything, dude? <laughs> I'm not. I, I am not. Listen, even if he does lose, even if it is Rory, I I uh, don't want to miss it if it's if it's Rom again. If if Rom who has stolen. Your Morikawa hit at the century. He stole my my Homa hit at um Gen was it Genesis? Genesis? Yeah. My home am I right there? I have the worst memory. God dang it. 
whatever event was. I had no, the whole... he stole it at the Genesis. Yes, at the Genesis. Okay. Yeah, okay. He stole you from the century, stole stole Homa from me at the Genesis. I am not going to be empty handed if John Rom wins again. I'm not. So if I gotta do if if I gotta pair him up, but I also looked at Akshay. You could do Akshay if you're if you're really into Akshay, who got a lot of play on the PJ Tour social media channel because it's like they've never seen anybody take their shirt off before. But if you're into Akshay and his his week that he had last week, sure. I don't really get it. I think I'd rather have Garnett with a little more experience around Puerto Rico, but you can do Rahm and Akshay at like plus 1550. I would rather just have that and know that it's I've got some Rom exposure. If if I miss on Rory, it's like, oh, okay, well. Yeah, I'm still going Rory with a combo bet there. Because I have Rory is actually of the of you know I'm gonna bet Rory this week at ten to one. I'm betting him. It's such a hard decision. Like, and we're not even talking about Scotty Scheffler. It's it's such a hard yeah. decision to pick between if you just have to pick one of these three, it is so hard. But the problem is the only one that has any sort of issue going right now is Rory's putter. That's it. Yeah, but does he who has who has the better history here? Oh, Rory for sure. So and Rom has hardly ever has hardly played here at all. So I mean that's that's the thing. I, I think Rory to me, if I'm putting my money on somebody in this golf tournament, it's gonna be Rory. Um I don't okay. think you're gonna tell you're gonna but I'm talking about guys inside of twenty five to one that I like outside of these favorites. Oh I, it's it's I'm going to bet one of Rom, Rory or Scheffler is probably gonna be Rom. Uh, and then I'm going to bet Max Homa at 22 to one on DraftKings, and then I'm done. That, that, that's okay, it. so I was adding. I think I think Willie Z and I think Xander make some sense. So there you go. Hmm. Uh, definitely avoiding. Um, I'm avoiding Cantlay. We talked about him pretty extensive. I talked about that fade extensively on the DFS show. I have my reasons. I have my reasons to believe that Cantlay doesn't enjoy playing on difficult Florida Bermuda courses with the exception of one event he's really done okay at, but the rest of them he's he's either avoided or just not done great. So I'm okay fading Patrick Cantlay here. Um, yeah, other than that, that's probably uh, that's probably it for the top of the board. Good deal. Okay, uh, let's let's move on before I, I don't know, before I turn into another... another <laughs> oh my God, that scared the living shit out of me. Sorry. God. Allergies are bad. You know, the pollen down the here. Pollen here. here. It, I, it is, it's like it all of a sudden showed up today. I was looking out the window and like a breeze was blowing. I could see just yellow cloud ro ro like roaming across my backyard. Do you? Do people outside of the South deal with pollen? I, this sounds ignorant. I know. I'm already. Just, I, don't, I'm, you know, I don't know. But it's here early, which is a great thing for the Masters because I think it'll all be gone. It's going to be gone. It is going to be gone. Yeah. yeah. No pollen. Thank the Lord. Um, Yellow That's clouds funny. everywhere here in Savannah. It's gross, dude. Speaking of Masters, uh, we've been talking about the Masters contest where you can win $500 in Augusta merchandise from the pro shop that me and Pat will do the shopping for you. Now we've added two other ways to win. It's on the screen here on YouTube, but if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you now have three ways to win merch from the pro shop. Me and Pat will go to the pro shop because we're going. You're not probably. We're going to do the shopping for you. You're going to give us your wish list, your address, your sizes. We'll do the shopping for you. We'll buy it with our own money, and we'll ship it to your front door straight from Augusta. Three ways to win. One person is going to win $500 in merch by just doing this, going to Apple Podcasts, leaving a five-star review, writing something. You have to write something and leave your Twitter handle, IG handle, uh, email if you want so that we can get in touch with you when and if you win. If you're listening on Spotify, you just have to rate five stars on Spotify. Now, two more additional ways. $300 in merch if you just simply subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the button right now. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's it. That way you're notified too every time we go live and we drop a new video. And then the third way is if you subscribe to our weekly email list. Don't worry if you've already done all of these things, you're already entered. So if you subscribe to the heavy petting email that comes out on Tuesdays and the chalk bomb email that comes out on Wednesdays, it's all on the same list. So if you get one, you're in, you're getting both. 
uh, you also were going to pick two hundred dollars and uh, two hundred dollars in merch to one person from that list as well. So we're going to spend a thousand dollars in the Augusta merch shop, send it to three different winners, and all it costs you is a little bit of time and effort, and we would appreciate it. So knock that out for us. All right, mid range. This is the sweet spot for me. I mean, outside of Rom, Homa. I really love this range. And it starts with Jason Day at 33 to 1 on Bet yes. MGM is the best number. Former winner here at Bay Hill. You can't, I mean, we've talked about him extensively over the last few weeks. It just, I mean, it's he's just here. He's his form is back. He's here. I love it. There's not much else you could say. I mean, Pat, this is crazy. And I normally don't talk about this guy. Normally, I mean, I think I I think I crapped on him a couple weeks ago, but I mean, Terrell Hatton. Terrell Hatton is getting me. Oh, yes. What, I mean, you can't argue the only PJ Tour victory he has is here. Runner-up last year. In good form right now. 36-1 to 1 on FanDuel is the best number. That number's gotten shorter since this morning when we were talking him up on the First Look betting show for Nut Hut members only. So I like that. Um, and then I got two more. Keith Mitchell at 55-1. to 1. Kill a Keith. Uh, tremendous form of late loves tough golf courses. The only thing I don't love about it, it's going to take driver out of his hand a little bit. He's going to, you know, th there's a couple of holes here where he's going to just have to hit the fairway. But other than that, the long irons have been great. He just seems like he's leveled up a notch. Keith Mitchell has. So I like that at 55 to one on DraftKings. And then, you know, this call me crazy. Cause he has a terrible record here. I don't think he's ever made a cut here, but Shane Lowry at 66 to one on points bet to me, is too good a value to pass up, like way too good. I, I, I see Bay Hill as a similar track to PGA National. I don't know what a pro would say about that, but it just feels like it to me. I've played Bay Hill a bunch, a handful of times. I've never played PGA National, but they just seem like similar Florida, Bermuda, harder golf courses, and I don't understand why Lowry's done really great at PGA National and not at Bay Hill. I don't know why. But 66-1, to 1, considering his form right now, uh, last couple of events, is too good for me to pass up. So those four, I know I like. I, there's a few other in here that I've got written down that you know I could be convinced to bet as well. And I don't know how many of these will end up on my betting card, but those four I like a lot. Well, you know, it's interesting because a lot of those that you just mentioned, several of those I like as well, especially Day, Keith Mitchell. I like Terrell Hatton. I actually like him more as a top 20 which I was going to talk about in a little bit here, but I like Terrell Hatton. And then I like Ricky Fowler at 75 to one to win. Now, wait a minute. Did he get shorter? I had him in the next segment. Cause, uh, hold on. Maybe he got shorter. I'm looking at across the board. I think 75 to one is the best I saw on Ricky. Oh, Hatton. he got shorter. Dang it. Like yeah. literally right before the show, he was 85 to one on FanDuel. Yeah. And, the thing I like a lot about Ricky, though, is he tends to play him. really well in, when you get some tough conditions. You know, if you if you looked at the Farmers a couple weeks ago, when those conditions got tough, he got sort of right up there on the top of the leaderboard there. One of the years that he finished in the top five in, like, all the majors, you know, tough win conditions and, and like, the Open Championship and the, and, the, and the U.S. Open. So, Ricky Fowler, and that's what we're going to get on Friday. I think we're going to get the worst wins on Friday. I like him in those type conditions. He's at 75 to one. So I'll throw him in there as well. The one that I'm really just like, I don't know why DB Hideki at 66 to one is calling my name. He really is. He's calling just, my name. Yeah. That, that number is, I mean, 66 to one for Hideki. Yeah. Yeah. If you, I mean, it, could get, if you could get Hideki right now at the masters at 66 to one, would you take it? Uh, yeah, 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 I would. I would. What uh, is he right now for the Masters? <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I should look. Um, yeah, hang on. I can, I can look. Um, yeah, I mean, Hideki is, Hideki is definitely tempting. I, I feel you. I was looking at, he's one of the ones I had written down, um, at that number. I mean, it feels a little bit like Shane Lowry. It just feels like a, it just feels like kind of an automatic number with a guy that talented, you know, um, to, to, to bet. So where is Hideki? Uh, damn. What's going on? Uh, he's 32 to one to win the masters. Yeah. Well, I would take 66 anyway. Um, but Ricky, I wish I would have gotten him at, 
that 85 to 85 to one number that you were talking about earlier, but uh, we talked him up this morning on the first look show. Uh, we, I think we all kind of hit that. You know, one thing we didn't say up top that we did say up top of the DFS show is the weather. We did forget about that. Like, and I, I kind of said that this morning to the first look crowd and said, listen, you know, a lot of Monday mornings so far in 2023, we've been looking at forecasts that were really nothing. So it was fine to go ahead and fire a bunch of bets on Monday. I think this may be a week to just say like, okay, I may miss out on a really good number or a better number, but rather that than fire early and then you're and then come Wednesday night, you're looking at the weather wave potential and you're like, dang, my, I got way too much exposure on the wrong side of this wave because there is some serious wind coming to Bay Hill and it could change. I mean, this is Florida. It could change quickly. It could shift. It could go away. It could get worse. It could move to a different day. It could do a lot of different things. So I, I do think that this is one that I'm being a little conservative about when to fire on some of these outrights. It's, it's not as early as normal, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so I think that's something to look out for. Well, dang, um, man, I'm disappointed that uh, that Fowler. I mean, in the next range that that we have here on our sheet, I have no one because then I just go, I go straight from like this mid to short spot, and then I just go absolute nuclear bombs. See, I just think with if with what we've seen already with the elevated events, I just don't know if there's even a reason to get too involved with some of these bombs and some of these guys that are over you know, 100 to 1, because it's just not what, you know, we're not seeing those guys win. I think that's where you may find some value with top 20 plays. You may, you know, top 40 if you want to do that. But it's just like in this type of an event, and and especially like just look at the winners here. I mean, the winners are always guys like, where where the hell are the winners that I had? Damn it. So, I mean, you have like Scheffler last year. It's a lot of Bright- short names. Yeah, it's, Bryson. It's- Hatton, okay, I'll give you that. Molinari in 2019, but Molinari was at that time was you know he had to have been at least 50 to one and shorter. You know he probably won the that was around the time that he won the Open Championship. Then Rory, then Leishman. I got it. I got it right here. Molinari was 33 to one. Rory yeah. was 20 to one. Leash was 100. That was the last triple digit winner we had. Yeah. So it's it's and that was in a different. I mean, at times, this event hasn't always been as good of a field either. Is I mean, I know a lot of people like to play the Honor Palmer because it was it was Arnie's event. Oh, this is still the strongest field it's ever had. It has to be. Yeah. So I, I just don't see these really long shot guys winning. I think that's where you look at top twenty and top forty and try to get that value. There, there's a couple guys I like, and I'll mention Gary Woodland, ninety to one, a guy yeah. who's won a major championship before. I think he can win an event like this out of the blue. If we're talking of a long shot, I think he's a guy that can win. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But other than that, I don't know. I'll let you go because that's all I got. All right. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play a game. I'm gonna play a game with you. Okay. I got a guy. Okay. PJ Tour winner. Plays well in major championships, which this isn't a major, but plays well in major championships. Gains strokes, gains more strokes in difficult conditions over the long term of his career than he does easier average, according to Fantasy National. Gains more strokes in moderate to windy conditions than most of this field. Okay. I'm, I'm setting the table here, right? Um, over the long term of his career, most known for strokes gain off the tee, approach, and around the green play. His putter has always been the issue. Always. Okay. Long term in all of his PGA Tour registered events, he is negative like 0.1 or 0.2 strokes average putting. Currently, in his last five tournaments, he is positive two strokes. That is a major turnaround in putting. Major. Okay. But what do we see a lot with guys who make big changes in one certain area? You kind of start to see other areas that they were once good at suffer a little bit. And that has happened to some extent with this guy I'm talking about. It's not terrible. It's not like falling off the cliff, but it's not vintage ball striking that we've seen early in their career when we were just sitting there going, when is this guy going to figure out the putter? Well, now he's figured out the putter. PJ Tour winner, like I said, okay? 
plays well in tough conditions, all those things. He's played here four times. He's ma- he's uh, made all made every cut but one. Uh, last year was his best finish here as a T17 finish, and he's 180 to one. Are you interested? Hmm. Have I have I intrigued you at all? 180 to one. Yes, you've definitely intrigued me a little bit there. Is he won a major? No, he's not won a major. He's not. Okay. But so he's but not he's like got, an old guy. He's not an old guy. He's not an old guy, but he's got good finishes at majors. PJ Championships, US Opens. He's got one Masters. He finished seventeenth at the Masters. And this this guy has been the guy that all we've ever waited on is the putter. Okay, great around the green, great scrambler, great iron player, good off the tee. It's just not been here in the last few few events of twenty twenty three. But the putter is rolling, and so it's like. Do we think that a guy can – can? how will we see him turn it around and get back to the ball-striking ways, and can he keep the putter and put it all together? Because if he can, he's really dangerous. If this is somebody like Aaron Wise, it's not happening. Because Aaron Wise is going to throw a ball into the water and make a triple somewhere. It's Aaron Wise. It's Aaron Wise. <laughs> no. No. Yes. It can't be. Yes. No, Aaron Wise, this is not going to happen for him. I'm sorry. Dude. Oh, come on. No. 180 to 1? Mm-mm. Okay. All right. Well, sorry. I tried. I had you there. I had you. You almost had me. I had you. Yeah. I had you. Um, I mean, you know, you know I got to throw a sprinkle on Kurt Kitayama if he's 250 to 1. Mm-hmm. If he's two fifty to one on DK, that's too juicy. I can't not. I can't not do that. Okay. Um, all right. Let's let's move on. Let's move on, Pat. Let's get to our, our let's get to our top twenty six pack. By the way, last week fantastic results. I gave you Chris Kirk at plus one thirty. That was one of my locks. I also gave you Ben Griffin at like plus one sixty, and he missed it by one spot. Finished T twenty one. That broke my heart. But Pat delivered. With Ben Griffin, I'm sorry, Ben Taylor at four to one. Hell yeah, hitting the top twenty bomb at four to one. So, uh, yeah, tail the top twenty six pack. Let's keep it moving. We've had winners every week with that. So uh, we're gonna give you two locks, and then we're gonna give you one bomb at four to one or longer. Pat, I'll let you go first. I don't want to steal any of your thunder, so I'll let you. I'll let you roll out first. Who you got? All right, well, I will start with a guy you mentioned earlier. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a butterfly in my throat, DB. Sorry. <sighs> um, a little pollen in your throat, you've been. Yeah, Terrell Hatton is plus 150 to finish in the top 20. I love Terrell Hatton this week. I think he can win the golf tournament, but I do love him for a top 20 at plus 150. So there yep. you go. I had him. I had him written down. Um, I am going to go. If I'm talking a lot, I'm going to go with the safe lock first. I'm, I'm saying Max Homa. I mean, I, you can still get a plus number on him. Last I checked on DK at plus one hundred five. So, yeah, I, I do. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and lock that up. I mean, we want winners here. These are locks, so yeah. I'm going Max okay. Homa plus one hundred five. Maybe we can get a better number on him later in the week. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right, I will drop down then. I'll go plus 190, Keith Mitchell. Oh, I had that one written down too. Big oh, fan man. of Keith Mitchell, plus 190. We're just stealing each other's situations here. Plus 190, Mitchell. Um, you know, we talked about this guy briefly on the DFS show. We didn't really talk about whether or not we like him. I, I do have some concerns with the... With, uh, with the you know with the home life which we talked about uh but i i, I am gonna go ahead and buy back into god dang it i'm gonna go uh, i'm gonna go ahead and buy back into sung jm hmm. i like the plus 140 number so obviously he's played api very well two third place finishes a 21st and a 20th Played here the last four years. Loves to putt these Bay Hill greens. Got to see the irons clicking a little bit more, but he's had he's had peaks there, and then he's kind of dropped off, and then he's had peaks, and he's dropped off. 
Um, so I, I think this will be a good spot for him. He doesn't have to, you know, you don't have to be super long to play well at Bay Hill. So I'm going to go Sung Jay at plus 140. So that's my second lock. So those are our locks. Give me your four to one or longer bomb. All right. Well, this is a guy that I have just not had a whole lot of faith in for some reason or another, but I feel like he can, um, I'm kind of coming around on him, and that's Adrian Maroc. 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 Plus 400. I like that. I think, you know, you, we saw him just in the top 20 last week. Um, just seems like such a solid golfer, and, and, and um, he's definitely coming on. So I like him at plus 400. Yeah, I like I like Maroc. I've uh, I played him a lot in DFS last week. I've played him in some matchups. Uh, that worked out. That worked out nicely. I like him. Man, I'm really torn here with this last guy. I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go with the guy who has a little more experience. Um, all right, this guy paid off for me last week. Finished T five, I think. He's he's six to one. So this is a this is a big one. He's six to one. It's Byung Hun An. I'm going Byung Hun An. Oh, he's yeah. played Big here. Bomb. Uh, he's played here s- seven times, believe it or not. He's played here since he's played here first time in 2010. And that's the only missed cut he's ever had here. Played in 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. He had a 10th, he had a 14th place finish there. And he's never gained strokes putting, not one time here at Bay Hill. But I'm I'm thrilled to see that his last two events, including the Honda on some Granny Bermuda just last week, gained a stroke and a half putting, gained a stroke and a half putting at Pebble Beach as well. Um, in that event, uh, so I mean I'm I'm like I'm sorry I don't not, he didn't finish T5 he finished 21st I don't know why I said that, but Byung Hun An I am uh, I'm digging Byung Hun An he's got the iron play he's um, really really good in the wind good scrambler, so uh, six to one that's that's a big one but I like it yeah love it. Good one. What else we got? Anything? I think that's it. Hey, don't forget uh, for all your coffee needs to check out front9coffee.com. Use promo code TJ10. Get yourself 10% off your entire order. DB's, you know, coffee blend continues to lead sales last we checked. So thank you for that, loyal DB coffee drinkers. Uh, Get it delivered to your door freshly roasted after you order it. It's delicious. It's local. Sourced here in Augusta, Georgia. Um, good people that work there at Front Nine Coffee. They love the Tour Junkies crowd. They love some coffee. They love some golf. So go support them and uh, support us. So go to Front Nine Coffee. That's front the number nine coffee.com slash TJ. Uh, all right. So, Pat, we got a huge week. Like I said, next week, Monday, going to be the Players' Championship show from your couch. We've got a special guest, a brand new segment we're rolling out next week. I'm excited about that. The Nut Hut is clicking. Had some some tremendous winning screenshots of all the Chris Kirk love. Let's keep it rolling, pal. Let's 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 notch up another victory. Pay attention to that weather, people. The weather's going to have to we're going to have to get weather wise this week, I think. Don't you think? Yeah, yes. we do. For once. Because yeah. it hasn't happened in a while. So I'm excited. I'm actually kind of excited about it. I don't know. I I, uh, I don't know. I I'm nervous. I don't want the players to be shit on again this year. You know, like no, I don't so want bad. that, but I, yeah, the players last year, you're right. That was terrible. So, yeah. It really just put a whole, I big, don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, right now I'm looking at the weather right now, like all day Friday looks terrible for literally everyone in terms of gusts. So if that's the case, yeah, everybody's going to, everybody's just going to get it on Friday, I guess. I don't know. Maybe you'd prefer the. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it in the Chalk Bomb email. We'll talk about it in the Nut Hut chat. Uh, but that's it for us tonight. Let's have a great week. Bend over your bookie, people. We'll see you next week from Pat's Couch. See you! Oh!